Yo, this is WSoul13 bringing you Raid Shadow Legends. And now we're gonna play the 10x for Opardin, right? Let's see what they've decided to give us. Let's see what's going on, right? Here we go, here we go. Let's see. Who is it? Who is it? Alright. So. I'm seeing a lot of content creators already hyping. Oh, they're giving us Draco Morph. They're giving us Draco Morph. 10x chance from Ancient Shards. Uh, <laughs> as soon as you turn it on, you probably already know what I'm going to say. But in case you don't know, ignore everything on the left side of the screen. Yes all the gold bordered champs don't even look at them honestly because chances are you're not gonna get any of them so here's the reality um, when it comes to um, 10x the only chance you will have to pull a 10x champ as a F2B low spender are the epics that's it and even epics are, are actually pretty hard to pull you know because there are so many epics now. Uh, the Void epics might be a bit of an exemption. Except you have to pop Void Shards to even get your epic. With the regular epics, you can pop a Sacred Shard and you get an epic right away. With Void Shards, you have to pop a bunch of Voids just to even get an epic. At an 8% clip, it's not that great, you know? So we'll go through the champs and we'll go through the points, okay? Just the epic ones, right? So Tarshan is in Demon Spawn. What does he do? Strength and buff on this champ whenever HP drops below 50%. Okay, not great. Uh, attacks one enemy, 25% of provoke. Okay, one provoke. Attacks all enemies. Uh, puts weaken on. So this is this draft is about weaken, I think. Increase death buff on all allies. Uh, okay, this this is not a good champ at all. Nope. Talia. Okay, so Talia has been around for a while now, probably. Attacks all enemies. Increase attack 25%. Crit rate. So the smaller crit rate than crit buff. Mm, crit rate buff. Uh, some the smaller increase attack and smaller crit rate buff. Okay, so already not quite good. 75% chance of placing a bomb that will detonate if Phoenix is on the team. That goes, uh, that's 75 max. Okay. She puts bombs on <coughs> with Phoenix in the team. Phoenix is actually not bad. <coughs> Talia, unfortunately, just isn't good enough to put in your team, even for the AoE bombs. It's only 75% chance, so. Definitely need the buff there or rework if they want that combo to work. Arndolf. Okay, what does this guy do? Provoke on the A1. Weaken and fear on the A2. And what is this? Wall of Metal. 30% reflect damage on all allies for two turns. Also places counter attack. Okay. So, ally reflect is a thing in Fire Knight right um, the best one is Spellhound which is a rare in my opinion the, 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 the best one to use for that particular role of just putting reflect up on your whole team is actually Spellhound because later on once you have a better Fire Knight team you can actually recycle Hellhound to be your campaign farmer <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure about Powering up an epic to do this, especially since you need to get the cooldowns down, so you will need to book this guy out with epic books. So it's okay. I mean, it's it's good against uh, the waves because you get fear and provoke out during the waves and during the boss. You get, um, I guess, counter attack and reflect. But it's just, it's it's fine. If this A1 was a multi-hitter, I think he would be even better for Fire Knight, right? But it's not, so that would be a good um, little buff for him if they decide to take a look at him later on. And then, um, you probably will put him on a Provoke set, 
counter attack and provoke is actually a de decent combo, but not amazing. So, nothing amazing, unfortunately. Right, so we gotta look at summon rush. So, oh, I gotta, I forgot to get my freebies. Always get your freebies, because they're free. That's what this game's about. Getting away with as much free stuff as you can before you spend resources, yeah? Okay. So, let's see what we got. So now we're just thinking about um, Summon Rush, probably? Are we doing Summon Rush today? Yes. Man, this last Dungeon Divers event is going to be such a major pain to get through. Because they're only giving us one day of overlap with Ice Golem. Which means after the fusion is long done, you're going to have to do a Dungeon Divers event. This is, this, this is the part where I don't like the way Raid does their Dungeon Divers events. In fact, the only fusion I missed last year was... Um, what's her name? Cybelle, Mother Cybelle. It was because of Dungeon Dungeon Divers too. That that's why I missed that one. Yeah, so 1,400 shards here, compared with the 2,500 they asked for before. So that's uh, roughly 3,900. So you know, I I think it was spot on when I said it was gonna be like 4,000 to 5,000. I think to pull this guy. So yeah, it, it's getting pretty expensive shards-wise to, uh, to pull a fusion champ these days. So we'll see how the fusion is next month, right? But we may have to adjust accordingly, of course. Um, but 3,900 points is definitely up there for a kind of like middling... Um, Progression champ, so progression wise, if this was your first progression champ, he will get you through dungeons, I, I think, pretty easily. Um, also, has a potential upside for a clan boss. So, I don't know, I feel like I feel like they've given us more impactful champs before for that price range, right? So, this is definitely a steep price to ask for in terms of, um, in terms of like the fusion event so let's take a look so i got okay I'm, i i've done some points in um ice golem right so definitely 600 points in ice golem so i'm kind of like a quarter of the way there and i still have classic arena to go so that's another five so that's five ten um dungeon divers how many is that another five probably five ten fifteen twenty so how close am I to getting Oh pardon? I'm missing five points. Where's that five points gonna come from? Is it artifact enhancement? Let's take a quick look at the event. Well I don't wanna just pull five fragments here and realize I may have missed an event, right? So Let's just make sure that I am reading all these events correctly. Alright, so Artifact 3 is going to start on January 30th. So yeah, Artifact Artifact 3 is the one I'm missing. So it's a little bit tight. It's the other thing too here. So if you're going to go for Exaxes, so Exaxes would be uh, Max here or Max the Champ Chase, then 5 from Champ Chase or 5 from here. That would be Exaxes to get um, Opardin. The main problem with that is the last few fragments of the event are still left to be played out, right? So, Dungeon Divers is a big one. Um, and I don't know if... I don't know if we'll have enough... Uh, if some of you might end up missing it because it's still kind of like ways away and then Dungeon Divers doesn't really pair with anything else, you know? <clears throat> so... Hmm, interesting, interesting little dilemma here. So obviously, we have to pull shards, right? I, I can't do this fusion without pulling shards. And I'm going to have to play until next week 
early next week to get that fusion champ. Okay, so. The question is, which do I pull? Like, voids or sacred? So voids, they're giving us... I, I, didn't, I didn't talk about the void champ, huh? Because it, it's actually a decent question to talk about the void champ. Skull Crown is probably one of the best um, epics we have for Arena that's accessible. Uh, because she does such a good um, nuke. But at the same time, she gives you a speed aura in Arena that's better than High Cthulhu. So anything higher than 19% that High Cthulhu brings is automatically a great thing to do in Arena, right? In terms of speed aura. So if you combine that with her nuke here and her built-in resiliency, which is this passive that gives her unkillable, She's automatically one of the most meta and one of the most annoying champs to have to deal with in Arena. So, if you don't have a Skull Crowner yet, you should think about trying to gamble for one here. But, alright, keep this in mind. They might give her away as a guaranteed champ. <laughs> so you could gamble for her now, or, you can give her, or they could give her away as a guaranteed champ. See... The guaranteed champs have kind of messed up 10x for me a little bit, right? So before gambling for a 10x was kind of a no-brainer, really. Like once your account gets to a certain level and you don't need just mass amounts of epics and you need specific ones to make your account better, gambling for 10x was the way to go. But now... Now that we have guaranteed champs, there's no need to gamble anymore. The only thing you're gambling on now is what champ are they going to give you. And based from last year's selection and actually from just Godseeker and Eerie right now, they're going to give you good champs. You know, They are going to give you great, impactful champs into your account. Okay, so. Is it going to be Skull Crown? We don't know. But definitely, um, I feel like Skull Crown could be in that category of just just really meta but not like overpowered or account defining you know so we'll see we'll see we'll see how that goes we'll see how that goes i have decided to just pull sacreds for this one so i'm gonna pop because void shards are kind of becoming really valuable look i have in the, i have the same amount of void shards and sacreds right now and voids are really where if they give you a guaranteed epic for Void that's a game changer for you, like Man Eater or Skull Crown, even if you need Skull Crown, because she is good in Night Revenant Faction Wars as well, while also being one of the best nukers in the game, you know, and all the arena stuff she does. Or um, maybe they'll they'll offer Demetha up this year. So for people that missed Demetha last year, they'll give Demetha up for, I don't know, 40 Void Shards. It's steep, but. The price they asked for her last time was steep as well, so you should expect that to be expensive, right? Or Man Eater at 50 Void Shards. Some people would would definitely do that for 50 Void Shards if they had 50 Void Shards for Man Eater. Yeah, so we don't know how this year is going to pan out. So I'm leaning more towards saving my Void Shards right now. Anything I can do to sh save Void Shards right now, I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to go for Summon Rush today. And I only need to break two, I think, or three. So I can break two and do the rest with Mystery Shards, or I can break three. Uh, what happens if I break four? Can I get something extra? So usually the only time it's good to go for max here and just break as many sacreds as you want or whatever is uh, to get the top end. Um, no, not the top end, but one the second to the top end uh, legendary book. But I think for someone, for yeah, for someone rush, they do a lot more books. So this isn't worth it for me. It's better in champ chase because you just have the extra 500 and get a legendary book, right? So for me, this isn't good. Yeah, 1750 here for that um, extra 75 gems, and then 2150 here for that extra banner, uh, XP banner, not worth it. 2500 for the skill tome, not worth it. 3,000 for the rank 5 chicken, definitely not worth it. So, I'm just going to go a little bit over, and I'm just going to pop 3 sacreds for this. Yeah? I'm going to save the mystery shards. Um, 
So what would be the reason for you to to say mystery shards versus sacred shards? For most people, I think you pick the mystery shards. Save the sacred. Sacreds are more valuable. For me personally, the reason why I'm doing it this way because I don't want to sort through 400 mystery chapels right now. Honestly, that's the only reason for me. And I have a lot of sacreds, so I can afford to do something like this. But for you, if you don't want to sort through your... Uh, if you don't want to spend that extra sacred shard. And sacred shards are becoming a lot rarer these days, right? You should save them and pull mystery shards for that last 400 points. That's what I will do. But not necessarily what you should do. You should do what you want to do for your account. So let's see, which 10x champ did we get up? Oh, Tayrell, what a great champ still. You know, <clears throat> a lot of people um, forget how good Tayrell was. When you're looking at an AoE decrease death, Although it's a 4 turn cooldown instead of a 3 turn cooldown from War Maiden. That actually does make a difference. But he brings decreased attack on this A1, which is really strong in Clan Boss, right? So this is why he was like a top tier champ before, before because before it was so hard to get um, this allied death in all battles aura, which is strong in Clan Boss. And while also getting decreased attack is strong in Clan Boss, decreased defense is strong in Clan Boss, right? This third meter one doesn't really matter, you know, for clan boss. But this actually kind of works in spiders as well. So he, if he's your decreased champ for spiders, you get an extra deeply third meter. It's it's good. He's good. He's amazing. He's amazing still. I think um, Tayrell is still a top tier champ. Also, this A1 is a two hitter, right? So, you know. Could be good in Fire Knight as well, earlier in the game when you're progressing. Yeah, I think Tyrell is, is still top-notch. Alright, what do we got? I need to pull two more. So we get Quargan. So I think I've had this guy before. Yeah, one enemy, increased duration of a random buff on an ally. Okay, so that's random buff, increased duration is hard to tune. Heal all allies 15% max, shield buff 15% of their max, 2 turns, 2 turns, 3 turn cooldown, so not enough to cover Scarab King, you need 1 to 1 ratio there. Uh, perfect Veil, 50% increase attack buff for 2 turns, allies whose attack is higher than their death. And then block the buff and increase death, death is higher than their attack. Is it 2 turns? Oh, it's a 2 turn, 4 turn cooldown though, darn. So, uh, if this was a 3 turn cooldown, this this could be good in clan boss. Granted that you're gonna... Death is higher. De granted that you're gonna run a defensive base team. <laughs> right? So, you know, big if, but... Um, yeah, th this, this could be right for a clan boss build, really. But, you know, get heal, 3 turn cooldown with shield. So that's actually a thing. In clan boss. I just wish that this had decreased attack on it instead of this increased buff duration thing. That kind of met, that kind of makes things a little murky, a little bit murky sometimes. But we'll see. So last one for me for today. Wish me luck. Let's see who we get. And it's Sanguina. Okay, we've already seen this one. This one is not good. Yeah, I would not use this champ at all. So. Three sacreds, um, one extremely good pull, which is Tyrell, but he's, he would be my second one already. So yeah, one thing just to do right after you pull sacreds, especially if you if you just pulled a little bit like me, is just go go through your faction guardian crits real quick and just get your dupes in. They give you a free boost, so. That one Tyrell pull gave me another plus 10% attack. That's a lot of attack. <laughs> that is a lot. So Lizardman, let's see if that was my dupe Corgan. If that was a dupe for me. Nope, it wasn't. And then um, Sanguina. She Sacred Order? Yes, she is. There we go. Another plus 10 attack on my Sacred Order. Yeah, just do that real quick. See where he goes. Right? 
And uh, I should be able to get my fragment here now. That should be it for me. So yeah, um, good luck on your pulls, guys. And then I'm gonna try to, to, to knock this event out today. I mean, as, as much as I can today. The only thing is dungeon, that dungeon divers, man. That, that dungeon divers is really, really... Oh, actually, I, I kind of did something different with this fusion this time around, which is I saved up some energy this time around. So I'm off tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I can be able to do um, this ice golem tomorrow. So this is this is why I tell you it's risky to do things like this. It is risky. Always just play whenever you can play, right? Because it just it just takes away that risk of you miss the window, you know. But if you're if you're pretty sure and if you're disciplined, I guess you can you can extract extra value by just like today. So I got ice golem today, but I got no dungeon divers today. That. That sucks. That's kind of a blow, you know. It's a blow to what I want to do with this with this account, which is get this fusion done. So what I suggest to you is to just um, save all your energy today, wait for tomorrow, get a head start on that ice golem thing. It does. You do get the uh, super raids, and do it in conjunction with the. Um, what was that? Dungeon diapers. So that's it, guys. We're done. We got through that summon event. We got our sh we got our fragments, and I just need what dungeon divers now. So I need four more sources: ice golem, dungeon divers, mm, artifact enhancement, and classic arena takedown. So I am done with Opardin. I got my 80 fragments locked in, and then 20 to go. So we'll see you guys at the end of this fusion, I guess. We'll do like a little recap. And then um, good luck on your polls today. All right. See you next time.